Welcome to SFF 180 and the third review for 2017's 12 Days of Halloween. Tonight, tales of magic and loss among generations of Romanian villagers where those who are more than human are hunted by the dreaded night police in the Bone Mother. Hello everyone, Thomas here, your host as always. Thank you for joining me. Have you ever taken a look at old photographs? I mean antique photographs from a time so far removed from us that the world back then might as well be purely imaginary, like Middle Earth. If you look at them long enough, you can begin to write a story in your head. What were the daily lives like of those people from so long ago? Who did this girl love? What was her favorite toy? Maybe she liked to sing. How did she decorate her bedroom? Assuming she had one that she didn't have to share. It's fascinating to try to imagine the lives of people who are completely forgotten by time. I mean, these single images might be the only record they ever existed. But they were people who had years of life on this earth, just like we are today. There's a series of these old photographs taken by a Romanian photographer named Costica Accente between 1935 and 1945 that serve as both visual accompaniment and possibly inspiration for David Demchuk's mosaic novel The Bone Mother, a book that explores supernatural horror through generations of families and old world traditions and drawing clear narrative parallels between the fascist oppression of history and its ideological resurgence in the modern day. It's a world where they call you a monster to make sure no one thinks of you as a victim. The Bone Mother is structured as a series of vignettes, most only a few short pages long, each telling only a snippet of a story, a snapshot of a life, usually cut short. On their own, they're incomplete, but woven together? They form a narrative centered on a handful of villages located along the Ukraine-Romania border sometime in the early 20th century. And with Demchuk's graceful writing, they feel exactly like old folk tales passed down by oral tradition. One town is noted for its thimble factory, whose wares are prized by distant royalty and which, we learn, are created from the bones of the factory's own workers. There are creatures of myth and dark legend living here, among the people. They pretty much are the people. There are vengeful water spirits and ghosts and wolfmen. There's a child who never physically ages, and a young girl with superhuman strength who <laughs> runs off to join the circus, only to return home to find her village exterminated. Watching over them all is the Bone Mother, a wizened old crone with iron teeth, and everywhere these people are hunted by the merciless death squads of the night police. Because each segment in the book is so brief, Demchuk is able to deliver powerful emotional moments in the simplest and most effective way. He's also able to convey terror that's very subtle and understated, a brief moment of revelation that's sometimes just one or two sentences and yet delivers more of a wallop than many writers can manage in a full book. And The Bone Mother is most interesting when it takes a brief stop in the present day to show how the descendants of these old characters have not left behind their old fears, nor their old enemies, despite the passage of decades, or living on another continent. As one character says, every generation forgets, every generation begins anew. Probably the most powerful of these tales comes near the close of the book. It's the story of a young woman named Lena, who's afraid to tell her new girlfriend Alice her darkest secret, that wrapped around her spine is a bizarre parasite she calls Little Sprout. But when events transpire that mean the secret can't remain secret any longer, the chapter transforms into a heartbreaking love story about love being all about sharing burdens and two becoming one. It's one of a few queer narratives, in fact, within the book, once again drawing upon the theme of being different and marginalized and hated. And there's a tenderness to the writing here that can simply take the wind out of you. The Bone Mother has recently been shortlisted for the Scotiabank Giller Prize, Canada's most prestigious literary award. And it's the first work of horror fiction to earn this accolade. It just proves that genre presents no barriers to greatness. George Sanders' Lincoln in the Bardot, which I thought was great, just won the man Booker. And I'd say The Bone Mother mops the floor with that book. Non-readers of horror could find it entirely approachable as well because, you know, it's less about freaking you out and more about what it must be like to be told you don't belong anywhere, there's no home or safe place for you. It's a melancholy, gentle, and quietly fearful series of tales that reminds us the real monsters in life 
aren't the ones lurking under the bed. And that's all I have for this episode of SFF 180. Remember the most important thing, these are reviews. You will not always agree with me, but if you enjoyed watching, please hit that like button, share the video with all of your friends, and above all, please subscribe. If you haven't done so already, that's how the channel grows. You can also support SFF 180 at its Tee Public store and at my Patreon, where recruits into Wink's Army. For two bucks a month, get little perks like watching the videos a day early. So I want to thank all of those awesome people. For their support, I want to thank all of you for being fantastic viewers, and don't forget, I will see you again tomorrow night at midnight for the next installment of the 12 Days of Halloween.